Yo, what's up everyone? My name's Dave and you suck at programming. And today we're going to talk about named pipes, specifically how to use them in Bash. They can be used in other languages as well, but in my example, I'm going to use Bash. But these are provided by your operating system, so any other language can open them because they just appear as files on your file system. So let's go ahead and jump into it. The first thing we can do is we can make a named pipe. We can use make FIFO, first in, first out, and the name of the pipe. So we can just call it pipe. And then when we ls, we have a bunch of files in here, but we have that pipe file. If your operating system does not have make FIFO, you might have make NOD, and you can give it the name of the file, and then the type of device, so P for pipe, same thing, it'll create a name pipe for you. There we go, we can just use it. So what can we do with this thing? How does it work? Let's jump into it. The first thing we're gonna do, something rare on this channel, I'm gonna go into Tmux, because I'm gonna need multiple terminals to show what's happening here. So let me split this. Uh, yeah, I think this way will look good. So the first thing we can do, we have our pipe here. We can cat the pipe. Now what's happening? Nothing. Nothing's happening. The cat is hanging. So from the pr uh, perspective of the operating system, we have asked to read this file and the operating system is just hanging because there's no data in the file yet, which is nice. Our program will block until data is available. How do we make data available? Well, pretty simply, we can write data to that pipe. There we go. Look at that. We echoed high into the pipe and the pipe above it. Got it. And hey, that's all good. We can go backwards too. The same rules apply here. If I echo into the pipe, we hang. We hang until something reads it. This is really cool because now we can synchronize multiple processes. We could have different threads or processes or uh, subshells. We can synchronize data back and forth by reading and writing to this name pipe, which is shared on our file system. Anything can access it, which is pretty cool. Could be a security nightmare, but hey, we're focusing on the cool stuff, not the security of it. Um, so what can we do here? Let's take a look and see what scripts we have. The first thing we have is our basic reader. So let's jump into the script. Really, really simple bash script. We just read in from the pipe and then we print read line and then whatever we read. So same thing as before, we'll run this and then we'll go down here and we will write into the pipe. And hey, look at that. We got the data, we put the read line line in front of it and then the script exited. So that's kind of interesting, something to be aware of that once we get data from it, that read call is done. It's considered end of file, even though the pipe still exists, um, it will exit right there. So what can we do about that? Well, we have our second script forever read. Here is a really simple way of reading from it forever. We just took the original logic and we put it in a while true. Nothing wrong with this, this is totally fine. You run this and same deal. We can just keep piping into it. You can put anything you want. You can say like, you know, who am I and pipe it into there. And there we go. Uh, users, uh, will this give a lot of information? Um, oh, I shifted my, there we go. Okay, cool, awesome. So that's how you can read from a pipe forever in a script. You can just wrap it in a loop. What else can we do? All right, so let's jump into the next script. We have our client writer, but before we run that, let's make sure we have the forever read going up here and we can go down here and just like before we can write into it, no big deal, just like we've been doing. We can also run our forever writer script or our client writer script, sorry. And so what this does is it takes a name as an argument and then it loops and it just writes to the pipe with whatever argument we give it. So if I said like, I don't know, foo here, this will just run every three seconds. It will write to the pipe and you can see, hey, look, we got the read line line that verifies our server's reading it. We got client foo, which is the name of the client that we gave it and then it prints hello. That's awesome. Why is this useful? Because what if we put it in the background? What if we did that in the background? We put that in the background and then we put that in the background and can you start to see what's happening here? We can have one server and we can have multiple clients. So we can have clients writing to it and we could have a server reading it. This way we could have multiple things, writing events and one thing reading event. And hey, we can actually start to build something cool with this. So that's pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and kill all of these. Um, how do we do this like that? That seems good enough, right? Are all the jobs gone? Uh, one more job running. There we go. Percent percent is just the last job that you put in the background. So if I just run through that list, I should be able to go through and kill them all. Um, cool. So now nothing else should be running. Awesome. That's great. And then let's move on to the last example here. So the last thing I have here is all in one. So this is an example of why it's useful. In fact, I don't even need Tmux for this. So let's break out of Tmux and let's look in all in one. So what happens here? There's a lot going on here. If you've never seen the syntax, I'll explain it. The first thing we do is this nice little bash trick where we open a file. This is the name of the file. 
bi-directionally. So open the file for reading and writing, and we save the file descriptor of it, because every file that you open will have some sort of number as the file descriptor, into a variable called fd. So now we have this variable called fd, which represents that file that we've opened. So let's go down here, let's not look at this function yet. We call client foo and put in the background, client bar and put in the background, client baz and put in the background. And then we just have our forever read here. This is the exact same logic as forever read. The only difference is instead of reading from standard in, we manually spe specify the file descriptor of the pipe that we open. And then if we go up here and look at our client function, it's the same thing as our client writer function. We take the name as uh, $1 and then we infinite loop write it into the file descriptor. So just like what was happening before, we can do all of this all in one script. That's what I mean by all in one. So you can see that I can open up this file in one script and then I can have different subshells all communicating with each other. So this is a way of having multiple different tasks in Bash simulating like threads or actually in this case, it can be multiple processes all talking to the same main thread. If you were to do like any sort of like GUI programming, you might know this, you can have asynchronous tasks or different threads, but they all need to communicate back to the one thread that's controlling the you know visuals that you're seeing. Um, so yeah, this is a pretty cool thing. This is what you can do with name pipes. If you want a more robust example of this, I have a video on this where I talk about a TUI I wrote in Bash that creates a nice little terminal user interface that plays music. Um, I use a name pipe under the hood to handle keyboard events and events like when the song is done playing or if the song fails to play. So you can look that up. I'll link the video um, if you're interested. It's nightfall.ysap.sh. That's my website. You can go there in your browser and you can look it up. And yeah, that's name pipes in Bash.